Hey, how's it going in this video? Uh, we are continuing the series where we're taking a look at uh, some of the top performing companies. Uh, I'm focusing uh, within the UK, perhaps it's worth covering others as well. <laughs> but uh, currently we're focusing on ones uh, that are based in the UK. Uh, operations might be outside the UK, but the company, uh, those companies are based in the UK. So in this video, we're going to be taking a look at uh, Rio Tingo, a global mining and metals company. Rio Tingo is a global mining and metals company. It's one of the world's largest and most diverse, diversified mining corporations, perhaps it's just because of how many things they can mine or extract from the ground, I guess that's where the diversification comes from. With operations in various countries around the world, Rio Tingo is known for its exploration in mining and processing of a wide range of minerals and metals, including aluminium, copper, iron ore, diamonds, and more. Uh, Myself, I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm doing a lot of research in this industry as well as taking a look at some of the top performing companies out there. Uh, for people who are interested, I'll be covering that in a more detail in just a second. Then we're going to be covering core values, history, finance, and all the details. Start with the history. I think uh, history dates back to 1873. Then a group of European investors founded the company in Spain. Interesting. <laughs> because of the name of I thought it has something to do with it. To mine copper deposit in Raya Tingo region. The company's name, Raya Tingo, is de uh, derived from Spanish word, the Red River, which Aptly describe the color of the water in the area due to presence of iron and copper deposits. Over the years, Raya Tinga expanded its operations globally with a significant focus of mining and processing various minerals in and metals. So I'm not uh, sure what happened, but I'm covering all the companies within the UK. So uh, perhaps this company was acquired by, uh, <laughs> so it was founded, uh, founded in Spain. But uh, slowly, <laughs> it was overtaken by UK. I guess uh, will be purchased uh, some of the equipment, everything. Perhaps they kept the same upper operational staff, uh, management staff. They kept, perhaps they kept the same staff. But they acquired all the machinery, know-how, technology. Everything was given by some of the UK's companies. Perhaps that's what happened. But uh, yeah, so uh, uh, we're covering right here. <laughs> some of the details there. Core values. Raya Tingo core values reflect its commitment to sustainability and safety. Ethical business practices. Let's take a look at some of the core values. There are four of them. I'll be covering those in more detail. The first, right? That's <laughs> the first value, especially when we're talking about high risk environments. Raya Tingo places the highest priority on the safety and well being of employees, uh, contractors, and uh, community. Especially uh, so, uh, perhaps they have some of the companies up there have acquired a uh, mining company, right? M myself, I might be interested in investing or having more control of the supply chain, right? So, once you have access to know how, skills, uh, perhaps machinery, then you once uh, all, any of the mines might be discovered, you, you might bid to have access with the different governments, right, on a larger scale, right? To, to operate within those mines and that would benefit your company, that would benefit perhaps some of the supply chain when manufacturing some of the products, as well as you might be able to offer a lot of value, uh, value up there to different governments. Integrity. The company emphasis conducting business with honesty, transparency and respect uh, uh, for the laws, regulations and the countries in which uh, it operates. Uh, there are a lot of different mines, right? So they can be in uh, places like Chile, uh, where it could be perhaps in Brazil. It could be perhaps some other places in Africa, or so-called, <laughs> I don't know, let's stick to that. So let's call things as uh, <laughs> where they are located, right? So it depends, right? It depends, uh, perhaps uh, Congo, they, uh, there's a lot of uh, perhaps different metals there as well. 
So it, it depends. It depends who are they operating, and they agree to a company <laughs> to respect the local laws, which is great. <laughs> sustainability. Right, Tinga is dedicated to sustainable mining practices, reducing its environmental footprint and contributing to positively to communities in which it operates. When it comes to perhaps, uh, there's a lot of uh, things that I don't know that much I have seen. I have done some research out and try to understand what would be required and what might be caused by uh, beginning extracting anything, right? So you, there's a, a lot of things, uh, a lot of things can there that can go not necessarily well and very costly. <laughs> in a very risky environment, if anything, and uh, at least companies do think about sustainability, which is a great thing. Innovation company continues to invest technology and innovation to improve efficiency, reduce environmental impact, and drive long-term value. If any takeaways, I have seen some projects I've mentioned as far as previously. Uh, that would be replacing perhaps some of the engines uh, in uh, some of those large-scale industrial vehicles so moving away from uh, red diesel and perhaps uh, they're looking to those companies are looking to invest if any people up there can come up with a better way of powering those uh, industry vehicles as well as perhaps that's one thing the next thing would be perhaps the moving need of drivers sitting in those vehicles so that would be the next thing internet connection <laughs> other things might be challenging but either way they're looking to improve that as well where those uh, vehicles potentially can be operated by software, if that's an option. So you have a software hardware, so a software can operate some of the hardware up there with the uh, operator overseeing with the fleet, right? Not necessarily operator need to sit inside the uh, sun, I guess, you can catch sun by the beach on Fridays, but not necessarily at the vehicle, right? So this person potentially can do something else, if possible, especially when we're talking about high risk environment. I would like to take a look at financial details, but I don't know how accurate this information is, as well as how this information might not be up to date, as accurate as everyone would expect it to be. Do not make any of your, of your decisions based on information when it comes to finances that I will share right now, right? Ratinger was a financially robust company. How financial data can change rapidly and it's essential to reflect on the most recent annual reports or financial news for up-to-date figures. Uh, let's take a look at some of the details of that I managed to find, right? So disclaimer, right? Do not base any of your decisions based on information that I'm going to be sharing with you. This video is for entertainment and education purposes only, right? Do not for you. I'm not your financial advisor. I don't know your personal circumstances. Do not base any of your decisions based on this information, right? Revenue. In 2020, right, I think I reported revenue of approximately 44 billion. Uh, they're performing well, I guess, what, 4 billion? It's a, <laughs> it's a change, right? <laughs> Pocket change. <laughs> profit. The company profit varies from uh, year to year, depending on the commodity prices and market demand. Uh, it seems that, uh, I don't know, people are there, some of the uh, lumber prices increase threefold. <laughs> lumber. This company has nothing to do with lumber, but that's just an example. <laughs> That's just an example, <laughs> put two and two together yourself, but either way, uh, some of those prices <laughs> increasing, that's what I'm saying, increasing or perhaps currencies, uh, value is dropping, and some of those uh, prices up there of commodities holding, uh, staying the same, <laughs> either way, either way. Asset, writing has substantial total assets, including mines, Infrastructure and equipment, which were value at the t tens of billions of dollars. Well, when it comes to, it's very hard to value those things. Even if having a asset and including mines, perhaps they have uh, leases, right? So they're renting those mines, not necessarily owning those mines. So there's a lot of things that I'm not covering in those videos. Do your own research and try to understand some of those contracts that those con uh, companies might find themselves in, as well as perhaps instead of owning a fleet. They might lease the fleet and they could, uh, instead of uh, uh, hardware, right, they, they could renew that hardware every 10 years or so. Perhaps so that's a, a sound business decision that most companies might be interested in. Uh, depending uh, <laughs> on the country where they operate, there's a lot of things to consider. So I'm not giving a full picture, I'm not having enough time to cover everything in the detail. <laughs>
market capitalization right i think it's typically among the largest companies listed on the stock exchange where it trades and its market capitalization has historically been the tens of billions of dollars it's one of the top companies within the uk that's uh, any takeaway there of course there would be some other mining companies where i have done a lot of research on of i have been seeing this company before i'm looking at this company for the first time market share uh, riotinga it's a major player in global mining and metals industry and holds a significant market share in various e-commodities including iron ore writing is one of the world's largest producers of iron ore particularly in Libara region of western australia right 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 right, right. producer so perhaps uh, not necessarily just extractor so this is the words that they're using to describe it i'm not entirely sure i don't know all the information but I know how much deposits of iron are in Australia, so we're talking about a lot of money, right? <laughs> as well as a lot of investments, a lot of risk involved in any of those industries, so do your own due diligence. Aluminium, the company is a significant producer of bauxite, alumina, and aluminium with operations in various countries. Copper, right? I think it has copper mining operations in several regions, contributing in a presence in copper markets. A lot of people are saying the prices of copper. I don't know. That again, it's up right now. It's opinion. Copper price will spike <laughs> unless they would find better conductors. Right, I covered that already. Hopefully, there would be a lot of interest and a lot of finance and finding better ways of conducting and transferring energy. For example, right, or within copper wires. So just the name of one area. Right. So if they can find better conductors, until then most likely copper prices will increase hopefully <laughs> so perhaps it's a sound investment i don't know i don't know i'm not advising you do your own research right diamonds a company owns and operates a uh, argila diamonds mines in west australia a significant source of pink diamonds which is great right so they uh, it seems there are a lot of operations there but not necessarily if the operations are limited just to australia perhaps they're operating in other regions as well uh, there's a lot of information, but this is not really too long. But uh, for example, uh, additional indicators. Uh, but either way, that's very short video compared to you. perhaps so what would be required to do research on different industries and trying to understand this company's performance against other uh, companies out there. But either way, either way, let's uh, finalize with interesting fact: pioneering mining technology. Riotino has a history of adopting cutting edge technologies in its mining operations. For example, it was one of the first companies to implement autonomous halt trucks and trains in its mining operations, which is great, reducing operational costs perhaps, uh, health and uh, safety risks, w w which is great, which is in fact. Argyle Pink Diamonds. The Argyle uh, Diamond Mine, owned by Riot Hingo, was known for producing world's most ex Exquisite pink diamonds. All two of the mine seized operations in 2020. So they had access to very unique products uh, that could offer to different markets, right? And indigenous partnerships. The company has history of working closely with indigenous uh, communities, particularly in Australia and North America, to ensure responsible and sustainable mining practices. Good that they're paying attention at uh, those. Uh, I'm not entirely sure that I have seen some of the uh, pushback going from uh, green, green companies over there. <laughs> so uh, I'm not entirely sure which companies are which and how they're performing. But hopefully, hopefully more attention are uh, paying into sustainable practices. Global operations. Right, think of mining operations span across several countries, including Australia. North America, South America, Africa, and Europe, making one of the most uh, geographically diverse mining companies in the world. Based on its portfolio and how well companies performing, it has to, it has to. Uh, instead of uh, perhaps performing just domestically, it is definitely a worldwide company based on what access they have and how well they're operating in their business, right? I have published a book, uh, the name of the book is Game Strategy. In this book, I'm focusing a lot on different areas 
what I would say as being a business or perhaps if you currently in a cycle where you're doing research and trying to understand different businesses, different practices and looking to perhaps start your own business, if that's where you find yourself within the cycle. If you currently uh, have started the business and you're looking to improve your existing business as well as you have access to a lot of capital and you're looking to invest in different businesses. There's a lot of information in this book for wh whichever cycle you find yourself into. Uh, where to begin, I'm sharing a lot of the details as well as I'm, I'm trying to make this information as simple as it possibly can to understand for people who are reading this book. At least I'm starting in very simple and I'm progressing to more complicated more complicated thoughts ideas and where our markets are as well as where our market is going to be in the future uh you can find it in the description below as well as top retailers has this book Riotinga stands as a formidable force in the global mining and metal industry with a rich history uh, that spans over a number of different countries and uh, <laughs> it's been tested definitely by time as well as uh, uh, it has a lot of uh, experience working with corporate rich lands of Spain a company's core values deeply rooted in the safety integrity sustainability and innovation uh, that overall guides its operations and uh, underprints its global presence while specific financial data and market share can fluctuate, uh, especially some of the information that I'm sharing within this video, everything can change very fast. It's, uh, some of the synthesis are very high risk as well as markets can shift very fast, especially with new discoveries being a new technology, new machinery that can affect the overall entire industry. A uh, small thing can <laughs> change a lot, right? With dynamic uh, overall, uh, within dynamics and uh, commodity markets in particular, so how much it can cost new mines being discovered, so supply of new minerals can come into effect, affecting entire markets, right? That can potentially happen, so t t <laughs> there's a risk involved <laughs> either way. But I think a commitment to responsible mining practices, cutting edge technology, and commodity engagement remains steadfast. Uh, do your own research if anything. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.